Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Kylie. I'm a PhD student from Syracuse University in the state of New York. Today is my pleasure to talk about our paper, as strong as its weakest link, how to break blockchain the apps at RBC service. This is a joint work collaborated with my advisor, Professor Yu Zhetang, and my lab mates, Jia Qichen, Xiang Hongliu, and our external collaborators, Professor Xiaofeng Wang from Indiana University and Professor Sha Puro from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. In today's talk, let me first introduce the thread model of our work, then talk about the vulnerability we identified in blockchain RPC services API that leads to denial of service attack. Then I'd like to discuss whether the real-world RPC services are vulnerable to this attack. And finally, talk about the evaluation results of our attack strategies. We also propose some mitigations. The finger shows a typical DF ecosystem. The DF clients are connected with one RPC services, and then the service is connected to many blockchain nodes. The RPC service can relay the transactions sent from the DF clients to the blockchain network. It also can serve queries from the DApp clients for the blockchain state. Therefore, this highly centralized uh, RPC service in the middle can be a single point of failure. We consider a threat model that there is a malicious DApp client who can send crafted a request to the RPC service and cause the service slow down or outage and we name this uh, attack deny of Ethereum RPC service or doers in practice the threat is real on november 2020 a major Ethereum RPC service was down which caused many DeFi platforms to shut down their exchange service Similar events also occurred in EOS blockchain. These incidents show that a denied RPC service can cause real damage. In practice, there are entities who can benefit from a denied RPC service and they have incentives to mount more DOS in the future. For instance, it can be one RPC service by attacking another RPC service will cause a bad reputation to the victim service and win its customers. Secondly, it can be a malicious DApp client. By launching this attack to cause the service unresponsive to another uh, competing client, the malicious can win a competition on blockchain such as auction or crypto games unfairly. In this work, we identified a severe vulnerability in the, uh, in the Ethereum RPC service, which can be explored by the doer's attack. It's an RPC function, ETH call, a special API that allows a client to call any smart contract functions. And more importantly, sending ETH calls to the RPC service is free. The benign use of this API is to estimate the gas for DApp developer and also for DApp users to query blockchain state. And this API is an essential business in RPC services. For example, Infura can serve 2 billion ETH calls every day. So based on these features, this API can be misused to attack the RPC service. For example, the attacker can send an ETH call to, ex to execute a smart contract of, of an infinite loop. And most importantly, it is a zero-cost DOS attack. Given such a vulnerability, the research goal of our work is to measure whether and how real-world RPC services are exploitable under the doer's attack. In practice, real-world RPC service may have adopted some protections. For example, 
they may configure gas limit to limit the amount of computation a single ETH core can use, and set a timeout to limit the execution time of a single ETH core. In the paper, we propose different strategies to work around these protections. For the details, please refer to our paper. And next, I will mainly focus on the last protection, load balancer, and our attack strategies against the load balancer. An RPC service can run multiple backend nodes in the, uh, in the service and run a load balancer in the front end. And the load balancer distributes the uh, user's request to different backend nodes. And to some extent, a load balancer is a protection against a DOS attack, as the attacker has to bring down all nodes in order to attack a specific node. So how can anyone outside detect a load balancer running inside a black box service? Also, if there is a load balancer, what is the load balancer's policy? Towards the goal, we propose a normal technique. We explore the open transactions to detect a load balance. The future of our open transaction is that it won't be propagated by the RVC node. So in our method, we send two open transactions of the same nonce from the same account to the target RPC service. And if both transactions are accepted by the RPC service, then we detect that there is a load balancer. In the case that one transaction failed, then we detect there is no load balancer. Now let me demo how our basic uh, measurement works. First, we send the first open transaction to the RPC node Assume it is accepted by the first backend node. Then it will return us a hash. Here, the node will not propagate the transaction to the other backend node. In the next step, we send the second open transaction. And if the second transaction is accepted by the same backend node, it will return us an error, such as already known. And this result uh, shows there's no load balancer. Let's back to the third step. If the second transaction is accepted by a different backend node, then it will return us another hash. And this result tells us that there is a load balancer. In our advanced measurement, a load balancer can load balancing request based on the sender's IP addresses or based on the API keys or even based on the timing. And for each policy, we measure them by sending the two open transactions from different IP addresses and from different API keys and from different time. We apply our measurement method on the uh, nine real-world RPC services and summarize the results in the table. We hide their real identity in the table. Specific, specifically for service X4, there is no load balancing for requests sent from different IP addresses, but it has a load balancing for requests sent, sent, sent from different API keys. Then, therefore, service X, X4 load balancing request based on API keys. And similarly, uh, service X5, uh, load balancing request based on the IP addresses. And the last column shows that they, did, they didn't configure any guest limit. And in the table, there are three services that don't run any load balancer. And another four services that run load balancing based on timing. Now, based on each RBC's measurement result on the load balancing, we propose different attack strategies to victimize a DApp client. For example, to attack 
to attack a victim in Service X4, the attacker can send attack payload from the victim's machine. And to attack a DF client in Service X5, the attacker can send an attack payload with the victim's API key. And the uh, attacker uh, victim clients in Service X6, the attacker can send the payload to coincide with the victim's request. Now we would like to evaluate the uh, effectiveness of our attack. We first extensively attack a, a local node on the our control, and we found that doers can delay the block synchronization greatly. And we further evaluated the effectiveness of our attack against the real-world access services. We address the ethic concern as follows. We bound the maximum delay caused by our attack under 5 to 30 times. And we start by conduct local pre-text to, to find uh, small attack parameters. And then during our evaluation, we test the trend of the slow down when increasing the attack parameters gradually. We present one of the, of the evaluation results on service X4. We report the response time of the binary request in the, in the Y axis. The attack start at the fifth second and stop at the 35th second. When there is no attack, the response time is around 0 0.25 seconds. And when the attack starts, the response time increases to 2.5 seconds. And so, so the attack can cause 10 times response delay. And the attack will affect the victim class only if the attacker using the victim's API key. So the result shows that our attack strategy against the service X4 is effective. This table summarizes the evaluation result on all nine RPC services. The second column shows the attack parameters used in the evaluation. For example, in service X1, we send the ETH call to execute CPU intensive operations like a hash computation for 20 million times at the rate of 10 requests per second. And this attack parameter can cause a 16 times slowdown. And the last column shows the consumed gas of each request. Overall, our attack strategies are effective uh, on all nine RPC services, and they can cause uh, different uh, slowdown to each uh, RPC service. Finally, we propose uh, several mitigations. For the load balancing, we recommend the RPC service to make the load balancing policies unpredictable yet consistency preserving. For example, uh, they should relay independent requests such as uh, ETH core randomly for other requests that has that have dependency such as send transactions, get transactions. They should relay them deterministically. We also propose other mitigations such as performance anomaly detection and make the instruction in smart contract interruptible. Please refer to our paper for the details. In conclusion, we identified a new vulnerability in Ethereum RPC services that leads to DOS attack. We did a comprehensive measurement study on the real-world RPC service to measure if they are vulnerable to the attack. For protections like load balancing, we proposed a normal method to measure the policy. And for each policy, we proposed different attack strategies. We ethically evaluated the attack on the real-world RPC services, and the result shows all of them are vulnerable to the attack. Finally, we proposed mitigations to defend against the DOS attack. Thank you.